Schick's work is so intricate, and at the same time, it isn't belabored. He imbues each image with emotion. Each character is a real person, and you start wondering, how do they relate to one another? Schick had that ability to allure you, to grab you and bring you into the picture. He obviously feels that the viewer may not get it unless he puts in that swastika, unless he puts in the buck tooth of the Japanese soldier. This is total demonization. You couldn't have a subtle portrait of the enemy or you'd never rouse the populace to feel like they are so bestial that you need to kill them. The whole idea of propaganda at a time of war is to paint your enemy as a beast and he's doing it brilliantly. And it's the first exhibition in Germany ever on Arthur Schick. I was born in 1975 and personally I'm as guilty of the Nazi persecution of the Holocaust as any I don't know, Israeli child or American child born in 75, so you shouldn't speak about personal guilt, but about personal responsibility. It's more important from my perspective to educate the people to accept this responsibility and to act according to lessons from the past. We have to face the challenge of developing new ways of making people, especially young people, interested in this part of history. When the museum approached me to ask me whether I would do this exhibition, that actually was the first time that I got to see Arthur Schick's work. I had never heard of him before. I could even see from the productions that we had to deal with, with wonderful and very, very honest art. Arthur Schick's work attracts and forces Germans to look back into their own past. He was a Pole, he was a Jew, he was a human being. He was against everything and everybody who was oppressing others. He had to quit being only an artist. He had to turn politically and use his art as a weapon. Schick is involved in a very specific zone in the arts. His illustration is an art that involves communication. The urgent thing that happens with Schick is on the one hand he's taking on a role that's timeless to be the decorator, illuminator, illustrator, and on the other hand he's taking on something very much of its moment which is to be the propagandist, the political cartoonist. Taking the moment that's happening, seizing it and trying to say something that you think is urgent about that moment and doing it in such a way that it'll last well beyond that moment. In this one you've got war, but in this particular picture, the war could be any war. You know, it's all wars. And to that degree, he's working as the artist uh, illuminator of something timeless. The infinite pains that seem to be going into this work has to do with work that is his deepest expression of devotion. And that's probably where the real charge and power comes from. My father was a great admirer of his work. As a child, it was clear when you saw him at work, his heart and soul was in it. I think of him as being an intense, passionate kind of man who spoke with conviction. So I remember feeling this was a very special person. It struck me how effective art could be in conveying a message with such great power. Schick was a master at it. We had, of course, the Haggadah. It was a work of art, a work of reverence for a tradition. His work deserves to be kept alive indefinitely. One of the many themes that runs throughout all of Schick's work, particularly the work he did during the war, is the theme that the artist has to be engaged with the political and moral issues of the time. The artist cannot stand aloof. He's trying to use classical forms, framing contemporary issues, to show how the wisdom of the past can speak to the problems of the present. Basic human issues, justice issues, freedom issues, oppression, 
All of the major issues that we're confronting in the political and social landscape today are issues that don't go away. When I first saw Arthur Schick's work, uh, the message was important for me because issues of the Holocaust were very prominent in my own ministerial life. And in the light of the Holocaust, I think that we need in our time to really take a much deeper responsibility for the future of human society. De Profundis uh, certainly is one of the most important illustrations on the depths of human suffering. Jesus is crying over the slaughter of the Jews. Holding the Ten Commandments really clearly connects with the Jewish tradition. Arthur Schick has presented the realities of the Holocaust. If these realities of human degradation that continue post-Holocaust are going to somehow vanish from human society, it's up to all of us, you and me, in different ways. We all have different roles. We have different levels of responsibility but we must all exercise that responsibility. He sees his role as an artist to do more than just make art. It, it, you really have to say something and you have to mean something to people. He's a very political artist and he wants to be and he's not apologetic for it. Schick is a good reminder of an artist who spent his entire life saying something to the society in which he lives but then use those events to look back at history and illustrate the past and make that past meaningful for the present. Here was an artist who was really a monumentally heroic figure during World War II in a way that, that is not, it's just simply inconceivable we would have that now. I think we can look at that wondering why it is that things are so different and try to figure out whether it's we who are different, whether the country is different, whether our sense about artists is different. There are a lot of questions that, that it forces us to ask ourselves.